Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. And Overwatch 2 has made $225 million and has 50 million active users. Okay, let me break all of this down because we've got some hard figures from an ex-vice president of marketing who has updated their, yes, LinkedIn page. But also, this is more of like a wider debate on actually how much money is Overwatch 2 making and is this the right direction for the game? Because, of course, the whole reason for going free to play was to give them a vehicle to insert microtransactions into the game to make the game generate money. And that's their long term plan. Of course, as we know, Overwatch monetization has been a, a bit of a mess, to be honest. It's very expensive for what you get. And we could talk about that forever. But the question is, are they making money? Because if they are, they're just going to do more of that going forward. Now, one thing I will say is the information we're about to look at here, it could be considered to be out of date. This person no longer works at Blizzard and this is only going to be data they, I would presume, have access to when they worked at the company. So it might not include things like the Le Seraphim uh, activation they've done, which I'm sure has made them a ton of money. Anyway, let's break all of this down. And the first place we're going to go is over to LinkedIn. And then we're going to take a look at how Overwatch 1 actually generated money. So look at this. This is uh, Sam Saliba. I, I believe I've said that right. So he was a vice president and head of marketing. Um, and he was to do with, um, you can see he's worked with all these companies, Blizzard, Meta, Google, and now he runs his own, um, I, I think some sort of like venture capital consulting company or something or other. I don't really understand, but whatever. Yeah, look, he's a, he's a marketing and brand consultant. He's independent. So I guess he's a freelance in that respect. I don't know, but you can see he wants to deal with generative AI, mobile gaming. You know, if you go and look at this guy's Twitter, you'll just see loads of posts about NFT, Web3, uh, all of that kind of stuff cryptocurrency that's this what this guy's about i guess but anyway what we're what we're interested in is this comment now remember 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 um this is linkedin people do like to bullshit on linkedin they like to well maybe not totally bullshit but they like to jazz things up so they look a bit more uh, fancy i doubt this person's putting incorrect figures out there but there is an issue with active users because we'll get onto that in a second um so basically this is what he says for overwatch 2 so he was the vice president head of global marketing Overwatch. This was probably a massively well-paid position with tons of compensation, and it was this person's mission to generate as much money as possible. So exceeded forecasts and KPIs. These are key performance indicators. So it basically means like they had goals and the goals were get to generate a certain amount of money, but they exceeded them by 130%, which seems outlandish, but okay, by leading integrated launch of Overwatch 2 game which resulted in number one trending on Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, and Google search and drove over 50 million active users and 225 million in revenue. Uh, presented launch plans to 17,000 employees, grew marketing agency part partnerships by 250%, onboarded and partnered with five agencies to bring creative visions to life, resulting in a silver Clio award. I mean, a, a Clio I mean, I'm from the UK. A Clio's a, a Renault car, mate. That's what that's the first car you get when you learn to drive. <laughs> I don't know what the, I literally don't know what a silver Clio reward is, but I guess it's great. Anyway, accelerated social and digital marketing growth, uh, including launching a new TikTok channel that generated 13.6 billion impressions and increased positive sentiment, followers, and revenue. Uh, that must be the Overwatch TikTok channel. 13 billion impressions. Uh, I guess maybe my TikTok's got millions and millions of impressions and I'm garbage on TikTok. Um, increased unaided brand awareness from 0.1% to 12. Oh no, look at this. Among the target audience of Gen Z. So there you go. There's confirmation that Overwatch 2 is a Gen Z play. It, they don't care about us. Like forget the millennials, like F the millennials and the boomers, they can go away. And and after the millennials, the Gen X, the, they, can, they get out of here. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, uh, Gen Z, that's what we want, Gen Z, because they're all playing Valorant, but we want them to play our game. Anyway, I don't mind Gen Z. Like, I've got nothing against Gen Z. I must clarify that. <laughs> I'm not a Gen Z hater. But, like, this was clearly the plan, right? The, game, the, the marketing plan was to go, right, we want to try and capture all these new players that we haven't actually exposed to Overwatch before, but we think that they would enjoy it. And guess what? They happen to be playing Fortnite. So if we can get Gen Z into our game, let's give them the same system. Let's give them a battle pass give them a store, get all of that, because they'll be used to it and they'll accept it. Whereas the millennial is like, F off. We want games that, have, you know, we want to spend money on things that make sense, not just garbage. Anyway, I digress. So uh, 
built and grew the team by 750 percent helping to restructure and improve efficiency okay so the main thing here is this right so there's two things here the first one is 50 million active users now active users in terms of blizzard is <laughs> they've probably changed this definition a little bit but it basically is someone who clicks on the on battlenet or on if you're on consoles clicks play if you click click play that's it you're an active user you don't even have to play the game you, you've lived, you've clicked on it you've interacted with it you're an active user and so they count you so this person's claiming 50 million which i think makes sense um because there was a massive marketing push behind this and it's free to play right i'm going to show you it, how long it took overwatch one to get to 50 million it was a lot longer uh than it was for this in fact i think overwatch one it took it a couple of months to get to 10 million but remember you had to buy the game it was a completely different monetization strategy the other issue with this is uh 225 million in revenue so remember that number because it sounds high but is it really that high well let's go over to uh wikipedia here so this is for overwatch um and this is this is what was stated blizzard reported over 1 billion in revenue during its first year of its release so 1 billion a thousand million so that's a lot more than 225 and had more than 50 million players after three years so there's the key thing after three years overwatch 2 blew past the 50 million way faster than overwatch ever did because it's free to play but then when we start looking at the the revenue generation it's only made 225 million i'm not sure that's for the entire year but it is for how long this person was involved at Blizzard, I presume. But then you look at Overwatch 1 and that generated a billion. That's five times more if we take those figures as they are. But there are less players. And this goes down to the whole thing, doesn't it? About you don't need crazy amounts of players. You need to monetize the players correctly. Yeah. Look at Baldur's Gate. They have made an incredible amount of money through actually just selling a complete game to people that people are happy to buy. Even more recently, look at Power World. I know there's a lot of debate with that and like, you know, let's say plagiarism with pokemon it's very similar to pokemon but that game is generating a ton of money and you pay for it it's not a free to play thing you know you're paying for an experience you can buy it and you experience the full game obviously you know that's not how overwatch 2 is is delivered a lot of the cosmetic content is all you have to pay for it if you want it anyway the point i'm trying to make is if overwatch made a billion in a year and it was box sales and loot boxes, although we know loot boxes didn't particularly do that well. It would have been the box sales. People are paying for a complete game. Then we fast forward to Overwatch 2. Yeah, you've got a shitload more active users, but you don't seem to be generating a half... Well, you're not even... You're generating a quarter of the of the revenue according to those figures. But remember, it might be more than that because I'm not sure that includes the Seraphim, which, as I said, probably generates a lot. Um, and this also goes into say Overwatch is considered to be among one of the greatest video games ever made. Yeah, it was what a fucking game it was anyway i've got more info so if we jump over here so what about sales well i think we'll read this whole section off but the highlighted section is is the key bit so basically a week from its launch launch blizzard reported over 7 million overwatch players with a total accumulated playtime of 119 million hours i remember 7 million players they're all paying for the game right so it's 40 dollars, 39.99 uh, that's what they're all paying for the game unless you bought like the special editions and stuff but i think most people would just buy that edition a Blizzard reported more than 10 million players by mid-June um, and has reported continued increases in the player base with 60 million players as of April 2021, whilst possibly accounting uh, temporary free accounts. Yeah, they probably were. The NPD Group is a video game industry tracking firm reported that Overwatch was the third best-selling retail video game um, discounting digital sales through Battle.net in the US in May 2016 on the month of its release and was a top selling game in June 2016. The NPD group later reported it was the seventh highest selling game by revenue, excluding Battle.net, in the United States for all of 2016. With digital sales, Overwatch was the fastest selling game during its release month. Super Data Research estimated that Overwatch bought in more than 269 million in revenue from digital sales worldwide in May. So that was the launch in 2016. So it if we believe these figures and believe the figures from that guy on LinkedIn, in the launch month, Overwatch generated more money than Overwatch 2 has in a year. Um, and over 565 million in sales on personal computers by the end of 2016, making it the highest grossing paid game for personal computers that year. But then as we go on to see this down the bottom, in Activision Blizzard's quarterly earnings report for Q3 of 
2017, the company reported that Overwatch revenues had exceeded $1 billion, the eighth such property owned by the company to do so. So that would be, you know, they've got this, it's probably loot boxes added to that and everything else, right? So a billion dollars for Overwatch 1 and 225 for Overwatch 2. So it doesn't, it doesn't seem as like, it, it doesn't seem as good, does it? It's it's odd. You know, it, it, there is this question, isn't there, of like, would Overwatch 2 have generated more money if it was the original vision of give us a fully fledged... You know, if I know this is just... This is like whatever. This is waxing lyrical about it. But if we uh, got Overwatch 2 and it was the full PvE stuff and it had all of the content that we've got for PvP now and all of that stuff, you would feel like you were buying a new game. And if Overwatch had 60 million players at its height, I mean, you can see that on the screen here, 60 million players as of 2021 um, and Overwatch 2 has only sort of achieved 50 million. Um, imagine if you got those 60 million players or even just 20 million of them to come back and buy your game for full box price. You've made a shit ton of money. Um, so I, I think it's very interesting to take it and, and look at past examples and look at the way the game's gone. Now, there is obviously a, a positive to being free to play. Um, it will sort of, it promotes constant development of content because they need to keep producing content, especially with a seasonal model. If they don't, then they end up, you know, they possibly could start lagging behind. Players start spending less money in the game. Obviously, the issue I've got with all of this is it rewards bad habits. If they're just doing a lot of skin recolors, and let's say a skin recolor is like, well, we can just do that, and we know it will generate $2 million, so let's just do three or four of those every season, and then suddenly we generate... That's the problem when we go down the path of Overwatch's uh, monetization. But anyway, I don't want to get hung up on that. We've spoken about that for literally, literally hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, there is some other stuff um, I guess we can quickly touch on, just a, a, a bit more reference material. So over on Forbes, um, this is talking about Overwatch 2 now. So it earned over 100 million in its first three months. That's the title. Uh, and we'll go and check out where this is coming from. But basically, Blizzard should be able to support Overwatch 2's development for a long time to come. Activision Blizzard said that in the last three months of 2022, uh, the game pulled in over 100 million in net bookings. Overwatch 2 launched right at the start of that quarter. In fact, Overwatch 2 could have bought in much more than 100 million during its first three months. In total, Blizzard net revenues for the quarter were 794 million. Now, it's got to be said that um, we will never see this information again because Microsoft now own Blizzard. They will not be reporting individual Blizzard monthly active users for the games and how much the net bookings are or anything like that because it's just it'll just be part of xbox gaming it'll just be all together maybe they might break it down but i doubt it right i, I think it'll just be all homogenized together under under the xbox banner um but this is 100 million in three months i mean and again if we look back at this overwatch one brought in 269 million in may when it launched i know it was a new ip i know it was box sales a different model but this issue of like being a, a long-term um like box sales not being able to support long-term development of the game is a weird one to me because it clearly looks like here that in its first year overwatch one i know it's a new ip it was the new hotness and all of that it made a lot more money than overwatch 2 made so yeah the next year it probably didn't make anywhere near a billion maybe it made 200 million or whatever i don't know what the figures are but their plan was to develop a sequel wasn't it and then to go again for the big box sales go again for that and it's like they've got I, it looks like the older the, the box sale method was basically you get a big cash injection to begin with and then off you go whereas the free to play is like you're getting a lot smaller injection as we can sort of pull from these figures it looks like a fifth of the money every year they're getting but they're going to get that potentially every year if they keep upgrading and adding stuff to the game um so it's just a, a different ways of looking at it but one to one first year of overwatch 2 compared to overwatch 1 very different like essentially in a different universe it feels like okay so let's take a look at some other stuff we've got um uh there's a tweet actually we should look at so this is the guy on twitter um i actually follow him and i was like quite shocked when i realized i was like why do i follow this person but it's because he was to do with overwatch marketing and i think when overwatch 2 was launching i was just following everybody um related to the game to see what what was going on about but he tweeted this uh, so this was from july last year and said uh, i can safely like this picture since i'm no longer involved in overwatch and it's uh, a list of people going to Team Fortress 2 because this was when the infamous, <laughs> if you guys remember this, this was the roadmap for Season 7, uh, 5, 6, and 7. And uh, there was not a very good reaction to this, uh, let's say. And um, yeah, Season 6, as we all know, was the, the dastardly PvE 
issue um and uh, we're not going to go over that but yeah that's the kind of person he was but i don't know you know he's just an executive who was involved in marketing so you know you can't really take too much from that so the next thing we're going to do is let's take a look at what reddit is saying about this because reddit is always it's sort of interesting to take a look at what reddit like how reddit are responding and reacting to this but i mean i think i've, I've put my thoughts out uh on this but basically there was this tweet right so this person tweets and it's essentially tweeting the uh the linkedin of the guy we just looked at um and then what we've got are people going like wow the game is selling a lot now obviously it is selling you know it's made money right i'm not i'm not i'm not like a debbie downer going oh they've made no money the game's dead the game ain't dead the game is making serviceable money and they've obviously grew their team and they've had to rebuild everything to create the, the kind of content that they want and keep the content going um, but it's really interesting seeing the way people react to this. So again, what we'll do is we'll look at the top comments here or the, the start of comment threads and it will be the top ones because I've done it by, um, well, top or hot or whatever it's called already. So yeah, this user is talking about 50 million active users. It's obviously stretching the term active. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that's just when you click on play. You don't even have to play the game. You've loaded up the app basically. Um, but it's not surprised to hear the game is doing much better in terms of revenue now. See, I'm not sure that's entirely true uh it's debatable honestly it's baffling that they went as long as they did based off loot boxes uh there was literally zero reason to buy yeah because the game director wanted you to play the game and have fun that's why they didn't want to rinse you with loot boxes but i guess they were forced to have them because bobby wanted them at the time anyway now uh that nearly all of the cosmetics along with other stuff has been paywalled you're seeing a lot of people engaging with those things like the battle pass and the shop it's pretty common to see at least half of the lobby use Overwatch two era skins and considering how they're priced, yeah, Overwatch is making cash over fist. Hand over fist. Right? <laughs> anyway, whatever. Mm. Uh, okay, so a bit of discussion now on that. And then uh, we get this. So people tend to bump, uh, tend to bump up resumes uh, on LinkedIn, which is true. Profiles uh, and bend the truth uh, just to make them a bit more marketable. I don't doubt the revenue number, which to be fair, I'm of that mindset as well. Uh, but we're, what constitutes an active user over what the time frame that number is? Uh, from us isn't very clear i don't doubt 50 million yeah fair enough um 225 million seems uh like a little bit considering how big of a franchise overwatch is i don't know see this is the first comment here we've got where i actually i do think it's i, I think it is underperformed but i think they were in such a bad position where they knew they couldn't deliver the pve where they just they had to do something didn't they and, and we ended up with what we've got now and it's like they got the dregs of the revenue generation i guess and I mean, we're still waiting for some sort of a comment on um, Overwatch 2 monetization, which apparently is meant to be coming in, in January, I think. Didn't Aaron say that? I don't know, but I've not heard anything about that. Uh, this user then actually replies to this and says, to be fair, they haven't really perfected their monetization, so there are some growing pains. Seeing stuff like the One Punch Man collab and K-pop collab gives me hope the team is going in a good direction. The question for me, as always, is how the core game will be balanced going forward. 50 million people logging in and engaged in Overwatch 2 since its release is great yeah the question is like how many people are playing it now and i think overwatch well, like the only data the, literally I, i'll bring the data up but the only data we've got is uh it's it's steam db and this isn't like it doesn't include consoles it doesn't include battle.net which is by far their biggest platform on pc it just it just has to be you know this is all we've got here is um eighteen thousand players with a peak of twenty four thousand, and it's quite stable you know if you look at this over three months like you know the player numbers they remain stable you know so yeah it's got a serviceable player base it does peak uh when you get seasons i think that's the start of a season there that's the start of a season. it's not much of a peak but i think actually that's even listed as a yeah so season seven bit of a peak you know so you get there are peaks right um and i think that's just what overwatch is now it's like it just trucks along as a peak people can check the stuff out they leave it trucks along and that's sort of it um but yeah interesting nonetheless so uh if they make more collabs with good skins of kiriko mercy and diva they'll double the revenue true <laughs> uh overwatch is dead okay sarcastic it's never been dead but well, i don't know if this figure is accurate but fortnite's got a revenue of 20 billion <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> and then this user's like yeah 225 over 16 months seems pretty dire you know i mean i'm not sure about that 20 million uh this one again i've not checked into this but like the figures we went over at the start of the video it is you know it maybe does make sense right uh this user claims it's a fifth of apex turnover again i don't know what apex's turnover is but uh 
but it's a dead game. Okay, sarcasm. Okay, honestly, you see, actually, you know what? To be fair, I didn't expect um, this is competitive Overwatch. The Reddit were on. I didn't expect them to be this sort of like, well, hang on a minute, that's not that great. I thought they'd be like, hey, oh, this is great. The game's loving it. But yeah, interesting. So uh, honestly, 225 million seems quite lower than what I expected. You know, to be honest, if I had to put my hand on it, if you asked me how much money did Overwatch 2 make, I would have said more. I would have said about 400 million. Easy. Maybe 450. That's probably what I would have thought. But if it is 225, it's interesting. But like I said, I don't think that includes Le Seraphim because that person left in June, didn't they? Or was it July? Whatever they... Well, well, I'm basing that on this. Um, July the 14th, the date there. You know, this person saying I'm no longer involved. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, Le Seraphim came after that. So, uh, But yeah, so... Uh, I feel now that they'd make more money if they had better pricing, which could... So, that okay, this might actually... So, when Aaron talks about redeveloping the monetization of the game, uh, or not even redeveloping, but talking about changes to it, um, and hopefully we get that info soon, it could be. They might think, you know what, we need to slash the prices of these skins, they're too expensive. Then maybe they start seeing more people buy them, you know. Um, could be. It could be that. Um, like, if all these 50 million active users saw... Even one good battle pass, each spending ten dollar would net them five hundred million. Yeah, you never like battle pass conversions and things in free to play games. You're never going to get the. You're gonna. You're lucky if you get five percent of players to do something. Probably even less. You know, you're not gonna get hundred percent of players buying a battle pass. But obviously, when you sell the game uh, as a box price game, hundred percent of players have to buy. So you do make more money off less players. Um, which yeah, you know. This is like a. It, 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 this is like an. You know, I could go into some philosophical f philosophical debate about this, but there is like a lot of systems currently are all about getting more people, getting more views, especially things like YouTube, TikTok, whatever. More views, more money. More views, more money. It's not about hey, you make a great video, maybe it gets ten thousand views. How do you monetize that versus a video that gets a million views is going to make more money than that? But yeah, there are things like uh, Patreon and stuff like that which you can use um, and. I may be using that shortly. <laughs> but like with games, the, the comparison would be a free-to-play game with a lot higher viewership in that regard um, versus a boxed game with less viewership, but everyone's paying to get through the door. Like you don't need millions and millions of players if you've got a, a couple of... Well, let's say you don't need 50 million players if you've got 10 million players that are all buying a game and actively engaging in whatever you're selling in terms of DLC and things like that. Um, but that's not the free-to-play model. The free-to-play model is get as many in as possible. And the higher that number, you're just basically generating money off that 2 3 4% of players. So if you keep increasing your number, you, you know, your sales will naturally go up. Um, yeah, so a bit of discussion on prices and stuff. That's all fine. That's like whatever. Um, surely they can afford to hire more remote devs. They actually do use quite a lot of remote devs. Uh, but I think that uses probably talking about maybe people working from home, not specifically agencies, but they do use agencies to do quite a lot of stuff, things like animation, I think, um, skin design and all kinds of stuff. So they do outsource work. Um, yeah, we've kind of been over that. Uh, is this for a year? 225 million in revenue is F low. Calculate the expense and their profit margin might be under zero. Um, I don't think... It, so that actually is an interesting point we do need to make. Revenue is not profit. Revenue is the amount of money you've made. It doesn't include what you're actually spending that money on, right? They've got a much bigger dev team. They had a big marketing campaign. Now, whether that's come out of that revenue, who knows? What the profit is, again, who knows? Like, I don't know what profit targets they've got. Maybe they made 50 million profit. Maybe they made 10 million profit. Maybe they made 5 million profit. Who really knows? Cost of game development is expensive, especially when it's AAA game development. Um, so, you know, again, interesting. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. 50 million active users currently or previous season. Okay. Uh, this game is dead as doornails. Okay. Uh, which was sarcastic. Heck yeah. Damn, not going to lie, but that makes me hella happy that Overwatch is doing well. Okay. And then replies to his own comment. Okay. I think we're in the dregs of the comments here. All right. I think we'll leave that video at that, ladies and gentlemen. But I think interesting, nonetheless. Um, the question here will be, is this an actual figure? 225 million for Overwatch 2. And is this the reason why they're going to change their monetization? Because they wanted more, especially if you compare this back to what Overwatch 1 did in its first year. Very interesting stuff. But yeah, the facts are the game isn't dead. The game is generating money. We don't know how much profit the game is generating. But I want you guys to let me know about all of this in the comments below. Because again, I think this is super interesting to go over this stuff. And I love it when we get this kind of like, it's not behind the scenes information, but it's like, 
info which is out there and this is going to get harder and harder to find going forward and uh yeah honestly i'm still waiting for whatever aaron is going to say about the monetization or in whatever form that comes out um so we can take a look at that but uh yeah again once again we're just waiting in a, a waiting room to see what season nine looks like in terms of competitive will it bring us back to the game full addictive mode and off we go and uh yeah all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening and watching to the video. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, do like. It really, really helps. Leave a comment below as well. Like I said, I always read the comments. Might not reply to them, but I always read them. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this. And uh, once again, thanks for the support. And I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. See you soon.